Vintage Twist Co. here. Uh, thank you for joining me on my channel. Uh, so today I am doing a um, challenge. Uh, the Ugly Duckling Challenge that's hosted by uh, Corey on Desert DIY. And um, I originally posted a short on my channel of a white dresser that I was planning on uh, using for the Ugly Duckling Challenge. But then I saw this on Facebook Marketplace and I knew that I could hopefully finish this one uh, faster because I'm starting this on today's Saturday and I need to be done and video uploaded and everything by Thursday so um, I, I, I'm pretty sure that the dresser would take me longer and hopefully this one doesn't take me very long uh, but I have uh, an idea and a plan owie, owie. So I hope you join me and like and subscribe to the video I see these tables come up all the time on Marketplace and I never really could figure out what to do with them. Like, I, they're so out of date, the style, and they're just like, I don't know, they're not really, nothing wrong with it. It just is completely not the style and they're for sale all the time. So obviously other people don't want them either. So when I seen this one, a light bulb kind of went off in my brain and I realized that I don't actually have to keep it looking exactly the same so uh, I took it home and as you can see I am now dismantling the whole table. It came apart very easily. I just removed a bunch of screws and this is basically what you're left with and it still looks like a coffee table. It just is way less bulky and more of uh, an updated kind of style, more updated look and it's actually a nice comfy height. In order to match the end skirting pieces, I was going to have to cut new pieces for the longer sides. And you'll see in a minute that I, uh, I matched them up pretty good and I just used these one by two pieces that I had laying around. Uh, they're just pine. So I took off the pieces that were on there to put in the longer piece and then I'm going to mark where all the grooves are because the end pieces have grooves all the way along so I'm going to use my miter saw to cut in all the grooves to match.
It would help if your sander is plugged in, just a pro tip. These longer boards were a little bit rounded on the edges, so I'm just sanding them as best as I can to get them a little more squared up to match the end pieces. Once they have paint on them, you're never going to notice the difference. It's very subtle. And now it's time for my Craig jig so that I can make some pocket holes in the longer pieces and I can attach them to the table. So I'm showing you here that you measure from, uh, I did the 5 8 inch, uh, you measure from the widest part of the drill bit, not the tip. Um, I have made that mistake many times, uh, just not paying attention and forget what I'm doing. This is not a tutorial on how to use the Craig jig. Uh, I'm not the best teacher. Uh, if you want me to try and make a video about it, I'm more than willing to do that. Here I'm just showing you the right hole that I made. The first hole that I made is not right and this one is right. Yes, good. I'm putting in, uh, I think, three or four holes in the middle, and then I'm going to do one on each end. The ones on the end are f going to go into the legs, and that will uh, help support the spindle legs a little better. And then I just repeat the same process for the second uh, stretcher of the skirting. And then I clean up. Clean up is very important. Got to keep your work area clean. I had a little trouble getting the one piece to stay with the without help with the clamp and I don't know why I must have been having a day but I could have just laid it down I'm not sure why I didn't but you will see in a minute that I did with the second one and then I just kind of shook my head at myself so anyways you just basically uh, screw it all in and then they're on there and they're done. And this is what it looks like before paint. Uh, 
After cleaning the table, I started sanding the top of the table and realized that I didn't have a sanding pad on my sander. So I put one of those on and then continued sanding, uh, paying close attention to the middle part that is particle board with like a thin veneer on top and around the edges is solid oak. So I wanted to preserve the edges of this table as much as possible so that I could keep the wood grain and in the middle um, I was planning on just painting uh, being particle board and uh, having the veneer on top it uh, I just wanted to cover it up I didn't think that it was uh, going to work out with the design I had in my mind so I stopped sanding because I realized that I have a carbide scraper. So I did a bunch of scraping and then went back to sanding. Oh, I also, um, I have a router. So instead of keeping the edges the same, I decided to get rid of the tiny little lip that was on the edges. And I just did a, um, like a, an angle chamfer on the edge all the way around. This was a little bit tricky, um, but I, I managed. I ended up going around the perimeter about three times and it's not perfect, but it turned out really nice. I would definitely do that again. If you like this video, please hit the like button. It goes a long way for my channel and if you want to see more videos like this please consider subscribing so that you can be and hit the no notification bell too so that you can be notified of my next video i also read all of the comments so if you have anything uh, that will help me out uh, any kind of constructive criticism or anything that would be greatly appreciated Then I went around all the edges with my sander to get them nice and smooth. I decided that the legs were too bulky at the bottom. To um, They just looked out of proportion from the rest of the table. So I just cut the corners off of the bottom and then I sanded them. This took a long time. But it was a necessary step to get it looking the way that I had it envisioned in my mind. I used my sander to round off the bottoms after cutting the pieces off and I guess the sharp edge at the bottom of the spindle being hardwood I was pressing too hard and I blew right through my mesh sanding paper and I also Wait, gouged happened? out the foam part of my sander on the bottom luckily I had another uh, hook and loop like velcro piece that I could put on the bottom of my sander and I had more mesh sanding discs that one just got totally demolished <laughs> And then I blew through that one too. Two down. I'm using a foam sanding block for the spindle so that it will 
I can push it right into the grooves and it will sand right into all the, the small areas. It works really well. And I'm almost ready for painting. I decided to keep the tops and the bottoms of the, the legs uh, wood color and I stained them with uh, espresso wood stain and then I'm painting the rest of the legs in fusion mineral paint in the color ash which is a dark bluish gray. I put the legs back on. I felt it would be easier to paint them if they were attached to the table. I found this great trim brush at Home Depot and it works great for these uh, spindle legs. Then I just use a tiny artist's brush to get into the smaller spaces. Then I had to use the artist brush to get into all the grooves that I cut in the skirting. This was a little tedious and took some time, but it was necessary to get the paint right into the grooves because the bigger brush wasn't really working when I tried. My kids are putting away the dishes as I'm painting, so it's really nice to have some kids that help out with the kitchen work while I'm trying to get a project done. Almost all of the furniture pieces that I refinish get the little felt pads that you screw onto the legs. It just helps protect uh, the, the, whoever buys this table will help protect their floors. And here I am adding some wood epoxy into the uh, middle grooves of the table just to try and hide those ones. Um, I felt like if I left them, you would still see remnants of the old table and I was trying to 
completely take away any image that somebody would have of wh where this table came from or how this table started. So I wanted it to be completely different and not noticeable from how it looked originally, if that makes sense. When I added the stain to the top edge of the table, it was not the same color as the legs. I'm assuming it's because there was still some leftover finish on the edges and none on the legs. So I stained it anyways, and then I sanded it back. Um, not all the way, but I did leave lots of stains still on there. Um, but enough that it would be porous again so that um, I could do a paint wash with the ash that I used on the bottom part. I forgot to film myself doing the paint wash on the edges, but you can see the finished result there. And now I'm adding some gilding wax in the color bronze to certain parts of the legs and uh, also going to be putting it into the grooves on the skirting. Gilding wax is a great way of adding a little bit of flair to your furniture. It's super easy. You just wipe it on or brush it on and let it sit for a day or two and then wipe it off. Um, you can wipe off the excess right away too. It doesn't really make a difference. Um, and then it's once it's cured, it will never come off. It's like permanent. Now I'm just sanding the top part where I added the filler and I'm getting ready to paint the middle section of the top. I would just like to take this opportunity to thank all of my subscribers. Uh, I am up to 507 subscribers now and at five, when you hit 500 subscribers you're allowed to post to the community. So I have made a couple of posts already and uh, I'm super excited to be able to make posts now. Uh, I've been trying to do that from day one and I did not realize that you had to hit a certain number. So thank you very much for everybody who has subscribed. Um, I really appreciate it. So now I am using a stencil and the gilding wax again to make a design on the top of the table. I had fully intended on making some sort of design, but this stencil was last minute. Um, I ran to my local dealer. Uh, she sells um, a bunch of paint and stencils and all kinds of things that you can't even, like everything you would ever need to refinish furniture and anything else in your home basically. And uh, so 
I would just like to say thank you and a shout out to Life's Rosie. You can find her on Etsy or lifesrosie.com. You can order online as well and have it delivered and shipped to you. Thank you, Rosie. Well, this is the end of the video. Um, thank you so much for joining me and watching. And uh, make sure to check out all of the participants in the uh, Ugly Duckling Challenge. Um, I'll have the playlist down below. Uh, it's hosted by Corey of Desert DIY. And I really love doing these challenges. I hope to be able to do more challenges in the future. And here is the finished coffee table. Thanks for watching.